everyone welcome back to another what's for dinner video or welcome if you are new my name is Veronica and today I am going to be sharing with you some very easy and simple meals that we've had this past week and hopefully it can give you some meal inspiration for your family anyway let's get to cooking Tonight for supper, I'm going to fry up some pork chops. I'm just going to add a little bit of vegetable oil to my skillet. And I'm going to turn the heat on. And then I'm going to add in a spoonful of butter. And I'm just going to let all of this heat up. While this is heating up in my skillet, I'm going to go ahead and start preparing my sides. So I'm just going to preheat my oven to 425 degrees. For one of my sides, I'm going to fix some asparagus. The way that I am going to do it is bake it. That's why I just preheated my oven. So I'm going to add all of my asparagus to a baking dish. And then I'm going to Add a little bit of olive oil to that and then I'll sprinkle on some salt and some pepper and then I'm going to add about one clove of minced garlic and some grated Parmesan cheese Whenever my oven is preheated, I want to stick it in the oven for about 10 to 12 minutes, somewhere in there. Just want to make, make sure or try to get this even, and that way it'll cook better. I'm also going to fix some baked potatoes as a side, and these are the russet microwavable potatoes. So I'll just pop these in the microwave for about seven minutes. I'm also going to fix some Sister Schubert dinner yeast rolls to have as a side as well. And I'm going to add just a drop of butter to each one. I'm using the parquet squeeze butter. I'm just going to brush this on before. I put them in the oven and then I'm going to do the same thing after I take them out of the oven. My oil has heated up so I'm going to add in my pork chops. Then I'm going to sprinkle on a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And then on half of the pork chops, I'm going to sprinkle on some Lowry's lemon pepper. Well, more than half because my husband likes the lemon pepper and the rest of them, I've got two left. I'm going to sprinkle on this buttery steakhouse seasoning. This is my favorite. And I'm going to let these cook for a few minutes on each side. After a few minutes, I will flip them over. And I will season the other side. I'll 
let these continue cooking until they are all golden brown, as you can see right here along the look like that. And once they are golden brown, I'll just remove them from the skillet. And here's my plate. For supper I'm going to be making some burritos the first thing that I want to do is preheat my oven to 350 degrees and then I am going to brown two pounds of ground beef I'm using the organic grass-fed lean ground beef this is one of our favorite fast meals And get that in there and then I'll just use my meat chopper and chop this meat up we live in East Tennessee and my allergies are raging today I'm not feeling the best so I thought I would make an easy meal for dinner Now I'm just going to let this cook. I'm cooking for six people, so if you have a smaller family, you can use one pound of ground beef and then it'll work just as well, um, or just fine. Um, it just depends on how much meat you want in your burritos. Now that my ground beef is done cooking, I'm gonna take this and drain the grease off of it. And then I'm gonna add in one and a half cups of water and two packs of taco seasoning. I'm just using the McCormick Low Sodium Taco Seasoning. You can use your favorite taco seasoning. I'm just going to mix this up and bring this to a bowl and then I'm just going to let this simmer for about five to ten minutes. Now I'm just going to remove this from the heat and start assembling my burritos. So now I have a cookie sheet and I lined it with a silicone baking mat, but you can use any kind of baking dish that is oven safe. And I'm gonna take a flour tortilla that is burrito size. And I'm just going to add some of the taco meat. You can add however much you like. And then I'm going to add just a little bit hands are clean. I've just washed them. And I'm going to sprinkle on some shredded cheese. And then I'm just going to roll the burritos up and place them like so. I'm just going to repeat this process for every burrito.
Once I have all of my burritos rolled up, I'm just going to take this sauce. I'm using the Taco Bell mild sauce. And I'm going to pour just a little bit over each one. And then I'm just going to sprinkle cheese over top of that. And now I'm going to place them in my oven that I had preheated to 350 degrees and I'm just gonna leave them in there for about five to 10 minutes until the cheese melts. And here's what they look like whenever they come out of the oven and the cheese is all melted. And here's my plate. The burritos turned out absolutely delicious. This night for supper, I made homemade Belgian waffles. The first thing that I done was separate two egg whites and I just set them to the side. I then added two and a fourth cups of all-purpose sifted flour to my bowl. I have fixed these Belgian waffles several times and my whole family absolutely loves them, even my very picky eater. They remind us of a funnel cake Belgian waffle. They are absolutely delicious. After all my flour was added to my bowl, I then added in one tablespoon of baking powder. I then added in one heaping teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I then added a half a teaspoon of salt and three tablespoons of granulated sugar. Once I have all of my dry ingredients together, I'm just going to take my whisk and whisk all of those ingredients together. Then I'm going to add in two cups of milk. One teaspoon of vanilla. and a half a cup of vegetable oil. And then I'm just gonna use my whisk and whisk all of these ingredients together. And then I'm just going to set this aside and then I'm going to work on my egg whites. I'm going to use my KitchenAid stand mixer to beat these eggs. If you don't have a stand mixer, you can use um, a hand mixer or if you're really strong, you can use a whisk. But I'm going to whisk these eggs in here until the eggs form stiff peaks. Now I'm going to take my egg whites and I'm going to fold them into the batter. This makes your waffles really fluffy and so good. Okay. 
sorry. And I also plugged in my waffle iron. I bought this one at Walmart and I really like it a lot. It's the Presto flip side and I plugged it up so it could be preheating. The light is off, so I'm going to add in my waffles. And whenever my waffle iron is preheated, I'm going to use a measuring cup. I just have a one cup measuring cup. And then I will add all this waffle batter into my waffle maker. After I had my waffle batter added to my waffle maker, I then just flipped the waffle maker over and I set my timer for four minutes. And after four minutes, the waffle was done. So I removed that onto my plate. I then added some powdered sugar on top because like I said a few minutes ago, these Belgian waffles taste like a funnel cake. So the powdered sugar makes them even better. And then I added some syrup and that was it. These Belgian waffles were absolutely delicious. This night for dinner, we grabbed something out to eat. We stopped by one of our local sub restaurants and I ordered a California chicken sub with a side of fries. I absolutely love California chicken subs. They're so good. That's it for today's video. I hope that you all enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a great day.